Joseph Stalin is undoubtedly one of the most infamous figures in history. While he is often acknowledged for transforming the Soviet Union into a formidable superpower and leading the nation through the Second World War, this accomplishment came at an enormous human cost. Stalin's regime had far-reaching consequences, with tens of millions experiencing arbitrary arrests, forced evictions from their homes, and compulsory labor on hazardous projects. Estimates indicate that at least 60 million individuals endured various forms of repression throughout Stalin's rule. Unhesitant to sacrifice anything or anyone in the pursuit of power, Stalin ascended from humble origins to become the leader of the Soviet Union, one of the world's largest superpowers. Joseph Jugushvili, later known as Joseph Stalin, was born on December 6, 1878, in the small Georgian town of Gori on the outskirts of the Russian Empire. His mother, a skilled dressmaker, and his father, a successful cobbler, provided him with a comfortable upbringing. Joseph Stalin began his education at the church school in Gori. He entered the seminary because it was one of the few educational options available, as the Tsarist government did not allow the existence of a university in Georgia. During his third year at the seminary, Stalin joined an illegal book club, drawing inspiration from the stories of the fictional Georgian hero Cobra, a name he would adopt in his early revolutionary years. Influenced by Karl Marx's works and the theories of Marxism, a popular form of socialism at the time, Stalin developed a keen interest in politics. He became involved with a group of social democrats, a revolutionary socialist party with the goal of overthrowing the Russian monarchy. As Stalin's engagement in revolutionary politics deepened, his academic performance and reputation at the seminary suffered, leading to his expulsion in 1899. He worked for a decade as an illegal activist in the Caucasus, facing multiple arrests and exile to Siberia between 1902 and 1917. Stalin embraced Leninist doctrine, advocating for a strong, centralized party of professional revolutionaries. His practical experience made him valuable to the Bolshevik party, and he was elected to the Central Committee in January 1912. Some historians have suggested that during this period, Stalin might have been a czarist spy infiltrated into the Bolshevik party, but there is no concrete evidence supporting this claim. In 1913, he adopted the name Stalin, which in Russian means man of steel. During this period, Stalin met his first wife, Ekaterina Svanidze, with whom he was married for three years until her death in 1907. At her funeral, Stalin reportedly stated that any warm feelings he had for people died with her because she was the only one who could soften his heart. He had a son with Ekaterina named Yakov, but they did not get along well in the years that followed her death. Stalin was, to some extent, characterized as a gangster, brigand, and common criminal with numerous arrests in his native Georgia. He was involved in activities like bank robbery and sophisticated fraud. He began by extorting money from patrons in the Caucasus under the pretext of a protection tax. The funds acquired through these activities were then purportedly directed to the Bolsheviks, who accepted him into their ranks. In 1917, while still in exile, Stalin received the news he had been working towards for over 15 years. A revolution had taken place in Russia. Russia's monarch Nicholas II was executed, marking the end of his family's 300-year rule and a provisional government was established to take control of the country. Stalin was released from exile and returned to central Russia with a renewed sense of purpose. However, Lenin, his mentor, was unsatisfied and called for yet another revolution to establish a socialist government. There was significant resistance within the party to Lenin's ideas, and Stalin openly expressed his opposition. To win Stalin's support, 
Lenin granted him a place on the Bolshevik Central Committee, providing him with a substantial amount of influence and his first real taste of power. In April 1917, Stalin won the elections for the Central Committee with the third highest number of votes in the party. Later, he was elected to the political bureau of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, a position he held until his death. Stalin devoted himself to Lenin's cause, and in October, the Bolsheviks staged a second revolution, removing the provisional government from power and establishing themselves as the leaders of the country. As a leading Bolshevik, Stalin became one of the most powerful men in the country. The struggle was far from over as the revolution led to five years of civil war, an exceptionally brutal period that shaped Stalin into the cruel and ruthless leader he would later become. During the civil war, Lenin appointed Stalin to the city of Saratin to acquire grain for the Bolsheviks and organize local fighting forces. Lacking military knowledge or experience, Stalin turned to a technique that would become a staple of his political career, the use of terror. Stalin gained a reputation for being particularly brutal in his use of terror, burning down entire villages and silencing anyone who dared to oppose him. His suspicions extended to military personnel, leading to purges that brought him into conflict with the head of the army, Leon Trotsky, who saw Stalin as a dangerous political rival. Trotsky expressed his concerns to Lenin, resulting in Stalin's removal from Saratin and initiating a lifelong rivalry between the two men, a conflict from which only one of them would survive. In April 1922, Stalin became the general secretary of the Communist Party, a position he gradually turned into the most powerful one in the country over time. This role was initially undesirable within the party, but Stalin saw the potential of the position as a base of power, allowing him to bring numerous personal allies into the party. This concentration of personal power increasingly alarmed Lenin, who, in his political testament, called for the removal of the brutal Stalin. Ultimately, this document was disregarded by members of the Central Committee, many of whom were also criticized by the Bolshevik leader. In 1924, Lenin passed away, presenting Stalin with an opportunity to reshape their public relationship. He seized control of the funeral, assigning himself the politically significant role as one of Lenin's pallbearers. Lenin was memorialized in Moscow's Red Square, with Stalin depicted as the guardian of his legacy in Soviet propaganda. Trotsky, Stalin's rival, received the wrong date for the funeral and missed the event entirely. Over the next few years, Stalin adeptly manipulated events to solidify his ascent to power. He played his rivals against each other and garnered enough support to oust Trotsky from his government position. With his primary political opponent removed, there were few remaining obstacles to Stalin's rise. He systematically demoted, arrested, and exiled his political adversaries, ultimately emerging as the sole leader of the country by 1928. Having consolidated absolute power, Stalin initiated the transformation of the Soviet Union into a modern superpower. In 1931, he declared, we are 50 or 100 years behind the advanced countries. We must bridge this distance in 10 years. Either we do it or we shall be crushed. He adopted a policy of rapid industrialization and launched a series of five-year plans aimed at fostering Soviet industry. However, the implementation of these plans was marked by chaos. Disregarding the advice of economic experts, Stalin doubled and then tripled production targets, very few of which were actually met. Inflation became rampant, money was spent without a budget, and entire factories were constructed with only partially finished blueprints. Despite these challenges, there was a notable increase in production, solidifying the Soviet Union's status as a modern industrial nation. 
To support industrialization, Stalin implemented a policy of forced collectivization. Peasants, the largest group of people in the country, were stripped of their private property and compelled to work for the state on collective farms. Anyone who resisted faced beatings, shootings, or imprisonment in labor camps known as gulags. The Soviet leadership argued that collective farms would be more efficient and generate a surplus to feed industrial workers. In 1932, the government significantly raised quotas on crops, expecting farmers to harvest more than before. For many, this target was impossible to meet, and the grain they did produce was confiscated, leaving nothing for them or their families. Farmers who hoarded their crops often faced punishment or execution. The exact number of people who perished in the famine of 1932 and 1933 is still unknown, with historians estimating that between 8 and 12 million people, mostly ethnic Ukrainians, lost their lives. For decades, the Soviet Union denied the existence of the famine, and historians in Russia and the West have debated whether it was man-made and a deliberate attempt to eradicate Ukrainian independence. Since 2006, Ukraine and 15 other countries have recognized the Holodomor as a genocide against the Ukrainian people. In 1932, Stalin was struck by the tragedy of losing his second wife, Nadezhda Alilueva, who, on November 9, 1932, shot herself after a quarrel with her husband. Officially, her death was declared as resulting from an illness. Together with Nadezhda, Stalin had two children, a son named Vasily and a daughter named Svetlana. After his wife's death, Stalin moved out of the Kremlin apartment and relocated to the Zubalov villa. Stalin practically ceased to visit his children. As the 1930s progressed, Stalin became increasingly paranoid, constantly searching for traitors and conspiracies while seeking ways to secure his power. He initially targeted his political opposition, using the assassination of Soviet politician Sergei Kirov as a pretext for convicting influential opponents of conspiracy. Between 1936 and 1938, a series of show trials were held where the accused were convicted on fabricated evidence, tortured into giving confessions, and then executed. The old Bolsheviks, who had been prominent since before the revolution and retained strong political opinions and influence, were singled out. They were replaced by young politicians who could be easily manipulated and were unquestioningly loyal to Stalin. Army officers were also targeted as Stalin believed their power and influence had become too strong. Over 35,000 officers were shot or imprisoned, and the Navy lost all its admirals. The purges soon extended to every corner of Soviet society. Ordinary citizens were encouraged to report suspicious friends and family to the authorities, driven by fear of being targeted themselves. The secret police, under the leadership of Nikolai Yezhov, set arrest and execution quotas, even purging its own staff to impress Stalin. Nicknamed the Bloody Dwarf due to his enthusiasm for torturing victims, Yezhov played a key role in the Great Terror. Between 1937 and 1938, an average of 1,500 people were killed every day. This period, known as the Great Terror, saw around 1.6 million people arrested, with 700,000 executed, and an unknown number perishing in labor camps and torture chambers. Stalin's extreme paranoia led to a culture of fear and distrust in Soviet society. The purges had a devastating effect on various sectors. Those working in industry feared suggesting changes or innovations due to the risk of being accused of sabotage, leading to a slowdown in economic growth. The military suffered an extreme shortage of experienced commanders, impacting discipline and quality. Stalin is well known for creating a cult of personality, 
becoming the central figure of adoration and collective worship. Numerous cities and villages were renamed in honor of the Soviet leader, and awards such as the Stalin Prize and the Stalin Peace Prize were established in his name. Trotsky criticized the cult of personality as contrary to the values of socialism and Bolshevism, as it elevated the individual above the party and the working class. Despite Trotsky's political exile in Mexico, he was assassinated at Stalin's behest, reflecting the beloved leader's influence. The cult of personality reached new heights during the Great Patriotic War when Stalin's name was incorporated into the new Soviet national anthem. Stalin became a prominent subject in Soviet arts, including literature, music, painting, and film. On August 23, 1939, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, also known as the Stalin-Hitler Pact, was signed by the head of the Soviet government and Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov and German Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop in the presence of Stalin. The exact motives behind this pact are still debated, but it appears that neither party believed it would last for a significant amount of time. On September 1, 1939, the German invasion of Poland triggered the beginning of World War II. According to the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, Eastern Poland was to remain in the Soviet sphere of influence. With this in mind, Stalin decided to intervene, and on September 17, the Red Army invaded Poland. Germany and the Soviet Union agreed to slightly modify their spheres of influence, leading to the division of Poland between these two states. On June 22, 1941, Hitler violated the treaty and invaded the Soviet Union. Stalin did not expect such an action, or at least did not anticipate an invasion to occur so soon. The Soviet Union was not adequately prepared to face the aggression. Even after the attack began, Stalin seemed unable to accept the reality and according to some historians, he was too shocked to react, despite having received detailed information and advance warnings from an extensive network of foreign spies regarding German intentions. Initially, the Nazis made significant advances, killing and capturing millions of Soviet soldiers. The execution of numerous experienced generals of the Red Army during the 1937-1938 period had a devastating effect on the USSR's ability to organize its defense. Stalin's lack of expertise in strategic matters is often cited in connection with the massive Soviet losses and defeats at the beginning of the war. It is worth noting, however, that Stalin ordered the rapid relocation of factories east of the Volga River, beyond the range of the German Air Force, Luftwaffe. From there, the Soviet industry efficiently supported the Red Army. Stalin's Order 227 issued on July 27, 1942, illustrates the lack of scruples with which he sought to boost the determination of soldiers in battle. Anyone retreating or abandoning their positions without orders was to be shot on the spot. These events suggest that Stalin was willing to sacrifice anything to avoid losing the war, including his family. His son from his first marriage, Yakov, served as an officer in the Red Army and was captured by the Nazis. They offered to exchange him for a higher-ranking officer, but Stalin rejected the offer. It is said that Yakov committed suicide by throwing himself into an electrified fence at the Sachsenhausen camp, where he was held prisoner. According to another version, he was killed for refusing to obey orders. Ultimately, the invaders were stopped and later repelled from the outskirts of Moscow in December 1941. Stalin then collaborated with the brilliant Soviet Marshal Georgi Konstantinovich Zhukov for the decisive victory over the Germans in the Battle of Stalingrad. Eventually, the Red Army and the Allies managed to turn the tide of the war, and in May 1945, Germany surrendered. However, this victory came at the cost of 25 million lives, the highest death toll for any country in the Second World War. 
The triumph greatly benefited Stalin's dictatorship, with Soviet propaganda portraying him as a hero. From his modest origins in Georgia, Stalin ascended to the position of leader of the second most powerful nation on earth, exceeded only by the United States. Extending his influence from the Baltic to the Adriatic Sea with the acquisition of new territories, Stalin asserted control over Eastern Europe. Winston Churchill notably declared that an iron curtain had descended across the continent, signaling the onset of the Cold War, a conflict that would shape the course of the entire 20th century. As detailed by Khrushchev in his autobiography, Stalin frequently engaged in nighttime festivities with his inner circle, after which he would sleep throughout the day, expecting them to remain awake and manage the country. On March 1, 1953, following an extensive dinner that extended into the night, Stalin suffered a stroke, paralyzing the right side of his body. He passed away four days later, on March 5th, 1953, at the age of 73, officially a cerebral hemorrhage was declared as the cause of death. His body remained in the Mausoleum of Lenin until October 3, 1961, when de-Stalinization commenced in the Soviet Union. Subsequently, Stalin's body was buried near the Kremlin Wall. Joseph Stalin will be remembered as one of history's most notorious leaders. Between 1930 and 1952, over 26 million people were shot, imprisoned, or subjected to internal exile. Tens of millions more were arrested without charge. Hero or tyrant, a great modernizer or a ruthless killer, there is no doubt that Stalin was one of the most influential figures of the 20th century, and his legacy has shaped the world as we know it today.